Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. G Eve, as we say in Ireland. And thank you for your interest in coming along to uh, this presentation this afternoon. So I'm going to talk about a prosopographical project, which is basically a project which seeks to leverage small amounts of information on a large number of people to begin to ask and respond to a range of research questions. So that's basically what I'm going to talk about uh, this afternoon. And uh, the project that I'm working on is a collaborative project called Clericus. You'll realize the reason for the name a little bit later. So it's a digitally managing research project in the area of digital prosopography. We have an ever-growing uh, graph database collection with over 25,000 separate biographical entries, 4,000 digitized resources, uh, 300 registered dioceses. Again, it has to do with the specificity of the population over 5,000 unique last names, and over half a million relations. Now, what's the background to it? But we two uh, tectonic plates uh, colliding and then moving apart. And the first one was a, a general need. I come from the discipline of history. And there, in the sort of work I was doing, which was on uh, migration networks and large numbers of people about whom very little is known about going to very distant locations. It was really to find a reliable, flexible and accessible digital platform to accommodate large quantities of biographical information on individuals, groups and uh, persons. And the platform was required to cater particularly particularly for unstructured biographical data, typical of Irish professional and migrant populations, and I think of migrant populations anywhere. There's nothing particularly special about the Irish. So that's number one. So that's a general need in the discipline. And I think across the whole of the humanities, because um, all of us, no matter what particular part of the humanities we're working, we're all closet historians. You know, there's a there's always a historical moment uh, in what we're doing, and that goes for the hard scientists, too. They are historical human disciplines, so um, that's where, 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 where that came from. Now, on the other side, there was a very specific uh, imperative, and that was in the institution where I work, and I'm very happy to work, there are archives and artifacts of historical significance, and one of them is an artifact, which I'm going to talk a little bit about now in a few moments, called a class piece, which is basically a graduation photograph, a graduation photograph of the graduating population of the college in a particular year, going back to the beginning of photography, and we have some non-photographic records from before that period. So, it was to try and make a prosopographical database with universal application from a very specific starting point. Now, this is the famous artifact, or an example of them, called a class piece. Again, uh, not a universal term, but class is obvious uh, where it comes from. And piece, then, is just a picture, basically. And you can see the class. So this material covers more than 200 years, beginning in 1795 when this institution was founded. Now, obviously, there were no photographs in 1795, so we had other information to fill in those gaps. But the photographic information, 124 of these graduation photographs from 1861 to 2018, and each of these class pieces consists, as you can see, of headshots of graduates, accompanied by their names. And because this is a clerical population, hence the name clericus, rather than having a county or a town origin, we have a diocese origin, which is an ecclesiastical jurisdiction. And they are arranged, these photographs, particular years, over various formats within rectangular frames, some of the latter artifacts being of potential significance for art historians. Not this one, which is very plain, but some of them are really fancy. Now, as well as that, we had a second data source, which were the matriculation records of the institution called the Hamill Student List, which is complete 1795 to 2018. So we had to put the photographs together with the information on those 
class pieces along with this information here. So to do that, we developed uh, the project. So um, of using the class pieces as a pilot for the development of a digital environment for early modern and modern prosopography. Great collaboration between university historians. We can get on when we make an effort. Archivists and Arts and Humanities Institute technical personnel. We live in a tight little community in my university, so it was great for me at technical illiterate to be in the company of people who knew much more about this than I did and I'm internally grateful to them and most of the work here is due to them and not to me. And we worked out work packages covering artifact identification and preservation, data extraction, ingestion and enrichment. So we developed these and implemented them. Now technical infrastructure, no project is worth more than the salt of its technical infrastructure. So. Again, historians and archivists and technical people getting together, and we developed an infrastructure which consists of the classic pillars, a server API, a content management and administrative interface, and a content delivery public interface. In other words, where we actually access the data of the general public, and we use a Neo4j graph database after a lot of debate at the beginning of the project. Now, the data model, which of course is at the very core and heart of the whole project, we wanted something that was simple, we wanted something that was flexible, and we wanted something that was extensible, basically because although we have a very specific set of data to begin with, this thing is infinitely extensible. If you're looking at uh, the populations we have, uh, we envisage to uh, capture in this. So, because the P because the data we're dealing with are about people, and because people tend to do the same things, most of them I know are born, and most people tend to die eventually, and interesting things happen in between. So we put the person at the core. So we're going to have a name, and they're going to be an individualized human being. Secondly, because we are historians, we have resources. What is a resource? It is the historical document from which the information is drawn. You must always be able to go back to the source. So if it's wrong, it can't be our fault, it has to be the source's fault. Okay? Uh, thirdly, we have organizations. So an organization can be an institution, like a college, or an organization can be a place like a county or a town. And lastly, and this is the key, are events. There are events in people's lives, birth, death, graduation, marriage, divorce, birth, etc., etc., etc. And those are the events. So the events are linked to minor entities of time and of space. When did it happen? Where did it happen? and all meaningful entity types and relations are defined in their respective taxonomies, something which causes us and continues to cause us lots and lots of headaches. There's a nice graphical illustration of the data model person up here on the top, resource, organizations and events, and then the two little side satellites there orbiting around themselves, the spatial and the temporal. Just give you a moment to drink that in. First release, Clerica's website first appeared in mid-2020. It was a COVID project, by the way. Um, all this had to be done distantly. Uh, main features, as I said, a searchable database, publication platform, and three visualization tools. A heat map, as you'd expect, an events timeline, and a network graph, which I haven't got a picture of here, but it's really cool to look at. Uh, second pilot in evolution, no project stays still, rolling stones must keep rolling, with new data and data enrichment. So we did a particular diocese for uh, uh, the whole period, additional data from the 16th to the 20th century. Uh, we also did a cognate institution in a nice town called Kilkenny in the southeast of Ireland, St. Kieran's College, and then we did three historical Irish colleges founded on the continent from the early modern period, Paris, Lisbon, and Salamanca. So you can imagine the range of data, sources, and types that we had to deal with. It was a great challenge, but a very, very interesting one. And uh, then uh, we decided we'd have to do something completely different. 
everybody we had looked at in the first and second iterations of the project tended to come from a similar background, a university background. We wanted to test our data model on a completely new population, so we took a settler population. In other words, a large migrant group which moves from somewhere and arrives somewhere else in about the same period of time. We picked Ulster, the northern province of Ireland, and we looked at the settlers who came from Scotland and settled in the north of Ireland at the beginning of the 17th century. 14,000 individual biographical records drawn from multiple historical sources. We were delighted to note that with minor tweaks, the data model we've chosen for Clary has worked absolutely perfectly for the Ulster Settlers Project, which we concluded in uh, cooperation with the Queen's University in Belfast. And I think this demonstrates that Clary is, is a digital platform which works for biographical information coming from the whole range of historical backgrounds. So this could be of use to people across our sector, uh, um, and I hope it will be. So the Tiger project continues to ingest new data. We're looking for collaborations. That's why I'm here networking uh, madly and wildly and uh, dispassionately and carelessly. They are supposed to do it that way, apparently. And uh, we want to expand our data model and our database infrastructure. It's been used already to support historical research and publication short research placements and data analysis and I'm almost there technical collaborations are now sought it's like an ad for a job isn't it um, first of all to use the project as a training environment for digital humanists and computer scientists secondly to streamline data ingestion tools to permit further automation of data processing and ingestion tasks to enhance data visualization tools, we need to, a lot of work on that. Uh, to develop mapping capacity to facilitate the linking of layered historical maps to biographical and other data, and to refine and develop taxonomies, which would really do your head in because it's so um, rebarbative in some ways, but so crucially important in other ways as well. And there I am concluded, I think, in time three uh, addresses that you might uh, be interested in uh, and I hope some of you would be interested enough to get in contact. We'd love to collaborate with you and bring Clericus and the Ulster settlers to the world. Thank you very much and it's wonderful to be here.